Welcome everyone to the class uh, this Wednesday evening. Uh, we are in the study of the book of Romans, and we will be starting with uh, verse 24 of chapter 1. Before we do, though, let's have a, a short word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? And Father, we pray that I bless the study of ours and such that we can search the depths of thy word for us and become better prepared to be uh, servants of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Bless our study, uh, both here publicly and in our private studies, that we may gain all the knowledge possible for us to attain in, thy, in the riches of thy word. We, all, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> So in uh, verse uh, 24 of chapter 1, uh, it reads there, uh, therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. <clears throat> we can say that when, when man is uh, determined to reject God, he will, he will not hinder uh, them and following his chosen course, God will not hinder man who's determined to reject him in following that uh, course of rejection, wherever, wherever it leads. When man is not held and restrained by responsibility to God and associating with those who do honor God, then their passions will lead to all sorts of uh, perversions. And we see that in our country today. So when a nation forgets God, <clears throat> the conventions of society become so corrupted that it will not uh, constrain any destructive moral behavior. It takes a, a power outside of oneself to keep from going downward. And one must allow that the power to act upon them, which is not happening today. So these uh, individuals uh, that God gave up in cleanliness, they exchanged, in verse 25, they exchanged the truth of God for the lie. And the lie is, uh, is false and falsehood. It comes from the Greek the word uh, pseudos. You know, we know that in pseudonym or pseudo-intellectual or even medicine, pseudo uh, pseudo class. You know, it just means something that's not genuine, not the real thing, it's spurious, it's a sham. But uh, they exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And verse uh, 23, you know, we talked about the glory of God is exchanged for an image. Here, the truth of God is exchanged for a lie. <clears throat> the creature is false, not genuine, and this they were worshiping and serving. Whether or not they uh, worship the creator, as they should, the creator is still blessed forever. The glory of God is not impaired, nor diminished by one's refusal to acknowledge him and worship him. <clears throat> In verse 26, for this reason, it just uh, was uh, mentioned in the previous verses, God gave them up to vile passions and says vile affections in King James Version. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. <clears throat> when the heathens decided not to have God in their knowledge, <clears throat> there is no limit to how low they would sink. In this case, uh, wherever you find these things going on, exactly uh, what moral perversion Paul had in mind here is not known. But, you know, Moses gave a law against perversions into it, which uh, many have fallen. In Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verses 22 and 23, it says there, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman it is an abomination. <clears throat> Uh, which is not politically correct today. Of course, you understand that. 
nor shall you mate with any animal or defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is a perversion. Now the heathens knew God at one time, and from here they began their downward course. They did not honor him as God. <clears throat> they became foolish in their reasonings. Their heart did not perceived spiritual things and became darkened. They played the fool. They lost the true notion of God. They ended up worshiping and serving the creature, whereupon God abandoned them to follow their own passion. And they continued their descent into moral and, and physical corruption as they uh, touched the bottom of human degradation. <clears throat> In verse 27, likewise also the men, <clears throat> leaving the natural use of the, of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due. Of course, this is uh, speaking uh, directly of uh, homosexuality, which you know we're totally uh, to tolerate today. <clears throat> and uh, I doubt that they would have had gay pride parades during the time of Paul, but maybe heathens had sunk pretty low. The vices of the heathen world uh, to which they descended, uh, it's well documented how perverse the heathen world at that time became. And, and uh, you know, we're catching up. <clears throat> In Genesis, the 19th chapter, verses 4 through 8, it says, Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them to the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, please, my brother, do not do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you <clears throat> and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since that is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof for protection. <clears throat> so sin is sin no matter what it is, but they're of course, some sins that are more horrendous just by the very nature of them uh, than other sins in homosexuality would be uh, one of those. <clears throat> and uh, Romans, first chapter, verse 28. <clears throat> and even as they did not like, <clears throat> uh, it's the Greek word uh, that's translated approve, and it's negated by the not. Uh, it's to prove a thing by putting it to the test. They did not like, they put it to the test and didn't like it. Did not like to retain, they refused to keep. They had it at one time. You can't uh, refuse to retain something if you never had to begin with. They refused to keep God in their knowledge. So uh, these individuals, they knew God. <clears throat> And they knew what was required to be approved to God. And they didn't like it. So they elected not to retain him in the knowledge. <clears throat> so God gave them over to, to a debased that's a reprobate in King James and, and the American Standard. To a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, that is, for a man of God, a, a Christian. And this is a uh, sort of repetition, which has already been said. He, Paul does this quite often in, in this letter. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, approve a thing, it comes from the Greek word dokimizo. It probably means to prove a thing by trial, to put it to test, uh, as seen in the following verses. <clears throat> in Romans 12, too, he says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove 
that's the Greek word, uh, English translation of Greek word, prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And in 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verse 3, in uh, Paul writing, of course, and says, when I come, whomever you approve, again, it's, you prove someone by putting him to the test, approved by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. That was to help the core of Jerusalem. <clears throat> Gentile church was sending a uh, monetary gift to them. <clears throat> and in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, which we uh, should all know by heart, test all things. And King James, of course, says prove all things. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. <clears throat> So the heathens had uh, tested and proved God. They knew him to be God, <clears throat> but they made a, a, a positive election. They decided <clears throat> not to keep him in the knowledge since God uh, condemned and reproved their pursuit of the gratification of fleshly lust. Since they at one time had God in the, their knowledge, <clears throat> their rejection of him was no unconscious act, but a, a deliberate and spurious decision. God is said to have given them, given them up to uncleanness, uh, verse 24, vile passions, verse 26, and a debased mind here. One having these characteristics is one lost to any modicum of virtue and is then giving up to sin and has abandoned any sense of right or duty. They have become so immersed in a degenerated way of thinking that God can no longer tolerate them and therefore rejects them. In this life, God permits them to reject him, not without consequences, however. A question that comes up from time to time is whether uh, those people, wherever they may be, who have never heard the gospel will be lost on the day of judgment since they have not obeyed the gospel. <clears throat> so such reason, reasoning goes uh, sort of like this. Such people, ignorant of the gospel, cannot be held accountable for what they do not know. Therefore, they violate no law of God. If this reasoning is true and is not, then an alien sinner is not a sinner at all. Nor could he be since God holds nothing against him. For him, there is no such thing as baptism for the remission of sins. The heathen nations of which uh, Paul here speaks are not in a covenant relationship with God, yet they are declared to be vile sinners. The whole purpose of the gospel is to call sinners to repentance so that they may be saved. If the heathen nations had not been sinners, they would not have needed the gospel. To prove the universal need of the gospel, Paul proves that all men, Jew and Gentile alike, are sinners. In verse 29, it says, being filled... Uh, that's the heathens as a class are filled with these uh, vices. Now, not every heathen was filled with every vice uh, listed. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality. Uh, there, uh, well, I might say that immorality is in the, uh, uh, you know, the Greek uh, uh, lexicon that I use. It's in the Texas Receptus, but not in the, SLA land, that, therefore you don't find that in the ASV. Uh, immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, and King James has debate. You, you can, you, you know, let your mind drift to a, uh, a presidential political debate, and then you know what strife is. <clears throat> and it goes on to say deceit, Evil mindedness and the King James and the ASV have the uh, have validity. It 
appear, this word appears only here in the New Testament. And it goes on to say they are whisperers. <clears throat> now, this is a, a continuation of, of verse uh, 28. Here. The inevitable result of a debased mind, one on which no moral constraints are in, are in place, are these vices listed here and in the verses 30 through 31. Unrighteousness is all injustice or iniquity in general. Injustice is unfair and dishonest dealings with others growing out of a, a lack of regard for the well-being, uh, the good of others, if you will, uh, the well-being of others. <clears throat> Sexual immorality is uh, adultery, fornication, comes from the Greek word, pornonia, it includes fornication prostitution, and chastity. And it's very common in the Gentile world, uh, uh, probably more so than it is today, but I, I think it'd be a, a push anyway. And you can read more about that in Matthew 19, chapter verse 9, that deals with uh, uh, marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and then Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 27, 28, dealing with the same thing, and then First Thessalonians 4, uh, verses uh, one through eight. Now, wickedness is the active exercise of a vicious disposition. Covetousness is uh, avarice, a, a greedy desire for what belongs to another. Uh, that's someone who wants property more than he wants God. Uh, maliciousness is a deep-seated hatred that takes pleasure in doing doing harm to others. And the harm does not necessarily include uh, physical harm. Uh, envy are full of envy. Envy is a selfish ill will towards another because of his excellence, endowments, uh, possessions, or superior success or character. It, it is a, uh, an ill-natured begrudging of what another person is, has, or enjoys. In Proverbs, the 14th uh, chapter, verse 30, it says, a, a sound heart is the life of the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. In Mark 15, chapter 15, verse 10, it says, for he knew that the chief priest had handed him, handed him over because of envy. Now, murder is uh, any willful or, and malicious killing that results out of a disregard for human life. Now, if you read anything about Roman history, you know that assassinations in Rome were a very common thing, and that was murder. The strife, the uh, disposition to be quarrelsome, angry, uh, an inclination to irritate. It is not strife for truth and right, but simply strife for its own sake. Uh, deceit, you can think of a bait that's uh, used as fish bait. It's a, it's a snare. It's an attempt to lure one into error. It's to uh, gain, get, uh, gain the advantage over another without revealing the true intentions of the intent. Where this is prevalent, uh, fairness in dealing with another is unknown. Evil mindedness is the state of mind which leads the uh, possessor to put the worst construction on every action, ascribing the worst motives to the best deed. Whispers of those who secretly and slyly, through hints and innuendos, denigrate the name and character of others, or at least they arouse suspicion in others. And in verse 30, it uh, goes on to say, uh, backbiters, haters of God, ASB says hateful to God, violent, uh, King James says despiteful, and ASB says insolent. So violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Backbiters are those who uh, make false and 
defamatory statements about someone, uh, especially those who are absent, uh, to damage their reputation. Haters of God. <clears throat> well, one cannot continue to defy God and his will for them without becoming a hater of God, contrary to what they may claim otherwise. <clears throat> Violent, uh, it comes from the word, the Greek word hubristes. You might recognize that. That's a, where we get the English word hubris. It's excessive pride or self confidence. It uh, describes one who delights in insolent wrongdoing towards others, finds pleasure in such acts. Cruelty and lust are two of them. <clears throat> Many, form, <clears throat> many forms in uh, which this quality assumes. Proud describes one who thinks too highly of himself. Uh, it's describing of a trait which is simply internal. It's not referring primarily to external manifestation, uh, although this is implied. <clears throat> It means one who is uh, proud, as we normally define the term. It. The external manifestation, when it appears, uh, being in the form of arrogance in dealing with others. <clears throat> Boasters is one who tells great things concerning his own prowess and achievements, uh, with the implied idea that many of his claims are false. This word naturally describes a trait which manifests itself in contact uh, with one fellow man, men, not one which exists simply within the heart. And you know, you've always known those people that uh, uh, the only time they want to talk to you is when they want to tell you how great I am stories. They're boasters. Evil of uh, inventors of evil things. Those are those so consumed with evil, uh, taken in its widest sense, that they devote their time to discover or invent new methods and modes of gratification. <clears throat> Disobedient parents. If uh, children disrespect parental authority, then they will disrespect, disrespect all authority. That's where they learn authority. If they do not show the due respect for their parents, they will not show proper respect for much of anything else. Uh, a decay of morals is, is uh, sure to ensue. And it goes on. <clears throat> Undiscerning, and King James and ASB say without understanding. Untrustworthy, and the uh, King James and ASB says covenant breakers. And unloving, and King James and ASV uh, says without natural affection, which I like better. <clears throat> Unforgiving, uh, King James has implacable. And ASV omits it because it is not in the uh, Nestle-Land uh, lexicon. And unmerciful. Uh, so let's look at these in, in order. Untrustworthy, one who will not, or excuse me, undiscerning. That's a willful dullness in perception of things moral and spiritual. It's uh, characterized by an unwillingness to retain the knowledge of God and his truth in one's mind. And one constantly dwells on matters eternal, will have an actively perceptive mind. Untrustworthy, that's one who will not keep his word. Uh, with such one that can be no confidence placed in any pledge made or all or written. Unloving uh, comes from the Greek word astargos. Astarge uh, is the love of family and or near kin, and a is this uh, negation. And it probably refers to the heathen practice of exposing unwanted children or the abandonment of wives and dependent children. 
And we're much more humane and sophisticated today. Uh, we don't expose children that we don't want. We just abort them. Unforgiving, that's one who refuses to agree to any terms or suggestions of peace. Unmerciful is not uh, one not compassionate for the poor, infirm, helpless, defeated. It's a hardness of heart. In verse 32 of the first chapter of Romans, it says, who, knowing the righteous judgment, uh, it has ordinance in the ASV, righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. <clears throat> now, the identity of the who here are those just described. That is, uh, those who choose not to retain or keep God in their knowledge. So what is the uh, righteous judgment of God? Well, it's the same idea found in uh, Luke, the uh, first chapter, verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments in, ordin in the in ordinance of the Lord blameless. <clears throat> Thus, it is the ordinance of God in conjunction with his commandments by which uh, one is, is determined to be faithful uh, by keeping and observing them. The Gentiles were not acting in ignorance. They knew the ordinance of God respecting the vices they practiced and that uh, such vices were deserving of death. Uh, this may have been just a, an intellectual exercise to them, uh, not considering for a moment the seriousness of their violation of such ordinances or that it applied to them. They had light, but they ignored it. The practice of anything contrary to the will of God becomes a habit. Habits never questioned or broken become tradition. Tradition, uh, tradition then permeates a society which becomes guilty of institutional sinfulness. As may be said, society is rotten to the core and is worthy of being extinguished as a society when it gets to that point. Here the Gentiles not only were guilty of practicing such things, but approved of, they took the light in, and they encouraged others who practiced the same, and were just as deserving of death. Death here is not a civil decree or judgment. It's, a, it's a one from God. In Romans, the second chapter, verse 1, Paul writes, Therefore, uh, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are to judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. And Paul had just shown that the Gentiles were guilty of many sins and were therefore subject to a divine punishment. Now, the Jew would agree with that assessment. <clears throat> Anyone not a Jew was a sinner who was lost, that's their view. The, the Gentile, in refusing to re retain God and his knowledge, turned to the worship of idols and were consumed by all sorts of vile behaviors. <clears throat> As a result, they were to be condemned. But the Jews had done the same thing, all the while professing that they were the chosen ones of God. Their claims, of course, imposed, of them, imposed on them greater uh, responsibilities. <clears throat> By making such claims against the Gentiles, they were, in fact, making the same claims against themselves. That was the implication of their judgment, and consequently, they, too, were deserving of condemnation. Uh, like sins deserve like condemnation. In verse uh, 2, 
<clears throat> but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Uh, this is not Paul's judgment, but it's God's judgment and is according to his revealed truth. Paul's judgment would be uh, fallible, but not so with God's. Jews, you and the Gentiles uh, who practice them, God condemns such practices in light of his truth. Therefore, Jews and Gentiles alike are justly condemned. <clears throat> and do you think this, O oh man, in verse 3, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Practicing is a habit rather than an occasional act. Uh, the Jews seem to be counting on God's partiality to the Jew. But God would not overlook the Gentile. The, the Jew expected God to overlook the Jew. Paul shows that sin is sin, regardless of who commits it. Sin does not lose its essential character by being committed by those who profess to be the chosen people of God. <clears throat> sin is no less heinous because of who commits it. <clears throat> it matters not. In verse 4, or do you despise the riches, rich, riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Or, as it starts out with, introduces an alternative to the, to the escape in verse 3. Do you, a Jew, believe you will escape punishment because you are a Jew? <clears throat> if not, then why have you not repented? God is rich in his goodness in that he allows time for the Jew to repent, but the Jew has not. Is it because the Jew despises the goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering of, of God? <clears throat> well, the Jews certainly had the means to know, but did not either, uh, did not, either because he did not want to know or he uh, neglected the means to know. And of course, the results are the same <clears throat> either way. In verse five, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. <clears throat> Hardness and, and penitent heart are two different things. Hardness means a, uh, an insensibility of the mind. Uh, no impression is made on steel or granite when touched. When applied to the mind, there is no appeal or persuasion that will make an impression on the mind. <clears throat> Uh, this one's mind has become ossified or petrified. As one may say, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is already made up. An impenitent heart uh, so dark and corrupt that it cannot repent uh, and so perverse that it would not if it could. That's the uh, definition of an impenitent heart. A heart is not naturally impenitent. <clears throat> but to become such by the practice of depraved acts and vice. By the measure of their hardness and impenitence, they were storing up wrath as they would goods or product. The day of wrath is the day of judgment to come, and the wrath is the deep displeasure of God. In the day of wrath, God will also display the righteousness of his judgment towards the hard and impenitent. <clears throat> uh, righteous judgment includes both punishment and reward. <clears throat> They're two sides of the same coin. In verse uh, six uh, continues, uh, verse five, it says, who will render to each according to his deeds? And we're reminded of uh, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 10, 
for we, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or, or bad. Now, this applies to Jew and Gentile alike. <clears throat> this is not saying that our salvation is by our works. It is by grace. On God's side, our salvation is wholly a matter of grace. For he received no pay for saving us. On our side, our salvation is wholly a matter of works. For we can provide no grace. So we obey from the heart that form of doctrine to which we were delivered. And God provides the grace. Uh, <clears throat> In Romans the sixth chapter verse seventeen we'll get to later of course but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. <clears throat> In verse uh, seven uh, is still a continuation uh, eternal life to those who by patience continuance in doing good seek for glory honor and immortality. Eternal life is uh, much more than eternal existence. Uh, both the saved and the lost have eternal existence. But only the saved have eternal life, which consists of glory, honor, and incorruption, that is, uh, immortality. It is achieved by uh, patiently and consistently doing good. You will never find anywhere in the Bible that those that uh, uh, whose abode is going to be in the lake of fire. Uh, they're never said to have eternal life. But they said they never die either. Uh, eternal life only belongs to those who are saved and, and uh, welcome into the mansion that uh, Jesus has prepared for them. <clears throat> Continuing verse 8, it says, but to those who are self-seeking, uh, self-seeking is uh, self-interest, uh, self-ambition. Uh, you can think of it, uh, it comes kind of like a Greek word that has to do with canvassing or soliciting for votes. And King James has uh, contentious, and uh, American Standard has uh, factious. <clears throat> Yeah, but those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and uh, wrath. This contrast with those described in uh, verse 6. Not only do they obey or not obey the truth of the gospel, but they also willfully do everything God forbids them to do. They are not rewarded with eternal life. Only indignation and wrath. Those who are self seeking or are contentious do so from a mindset that all things exist for me. Uh, this, that's the bottom of the hour. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let me just uh, finish at verse nine because it really changes to in verse 10. It says tribulation and anguish on every soul who does evil, of the Jew first, and all, but also uh, of the Greek. In addition to the consequences of self-seeking and disobedience to the truth, said forth in verse 8, such will also endure tribulation and anguish and, and eternal punishment. This is not an eternal life, as I said. It applies equally to Jew and Gentile to embrace and practice evil. To, to do so, they are in rebellion against the truth. The Jew first does not indicate order of occurrence, but distinction. He had been uh, favored above all others, had fuller knowledge, and therefore greater opportunities and consequential responsibilities. <clears throat> so we'll stop here and we'll begin with verse 10 next week. <clears throat>